Please watch the following dramatization that depicts a brother who faces a threat of being arrested, but by reflecting on Daniel's example, he is helped to continue serving Jehovah with constancy in the face of this intimidating circumstance. It's still chaos in many parts of the city, with armed soldiers detaining and arresting those not pledging support of the new government. Are we still going to the meeting tonight? I wanted to do what was best for my wife and daughter. But a few of the elders have already been arrested. What if I was arrested? happened to my family. You're not going home to pray, are you? I pray at my window three times a day, every day if I even appear to compromise. What would they think? I know Jehovah. And if I trust him, he'll reward me. I don't know how, but he will. Pray that I keep my faith, that we all keep our faith, no matter how this ends. So we have here in the concluding talk of the Powerful by Faith convention, yet another persecution-based drama. We've had a number of them actually in this convention. It seems to be a recurring theme in these conventions in general to depict the Great Tribulation. In this particular convention, we've had dramatization after dramatization set in this supposedly future period that Jehovah's Witnesses can look forward to where the authorities turn on them. And in this particular situation, a guy is worried about his family, about his wife and daughter. <laughs> and incidentally, I'm not that convinced by the casting because when you look at the two ladies, they look sort of of comparable age. <laughs> You'd be forgiven for thinking this wasn't some kind of polyamorous situation. I'm not buying the fact that one of those is the wife and one of those is the daughter. Poor casting, if you ask me, from the audio visual services department. But that aside, all of this is intended to stoke paranoia among Jehovah's Witnesses to depict this future period when they're going to be rounded up by the authorities. And the message in this dramatization is have faith like Daniel. I commented during the Daniel drama that there were hidden messages there that seemed to be alluding to this persecution narrative among Jehovah's Witnesses, especially the part of the drama where Daniel is arrested for praying. Sure enough, <laughs> within an hour or so, we get precisely this message drilled home. This was, it turns out, the intended message for that part of the drama. Just as Daniel was picked on, just as Daniel was framed, was pursued by his enemies, was persecuted for persisting with his worship, Jehovah's Witnesses can apparently expect the same thing to happen during the Great Tribulation. The scriptures are clear. We must continue to meet together, even in small groups if necessary. Let's just pray that whatever happens, we have the strength to endure it. Dear Jehovah God, please. Eventually, help us. I was arrested.
We miss you so much, but we're very proud of you. We know whatever the outcome of your trial, you'll maintain your faith, and so will we. Are you scared? I was very scared. But Jehovah helps us when we're scared. I knew I would be okay, and that Jehovah would take care of my family. As was true of the brother in our video, we will be persecuted. 2 Timothy 3.12 says, All those desiring to live with godly devotion in association with Christ Jesus will also be persecuted. It didn't say maybe, good chance, probably. Will be persecuted. Guaranteed. But like our brother in the video, when persecuted, let's reflect on Daniel's example, and let's fight for our faith, and let's pray confident that our God is always mightier than our enemies. And there you have, in summary, the entire reason for fixating on stories of persecution, both real and fictitious. This is obviously a fictitious story, but the organization will also show heart-tugging testimonials from Russia and other places where Jehovah's Witnesses are being persecuted in the here and now. The governing body, people like Stephen Lett, need these stories, need these narratives for the religion to make sense because Jehovah's Witnesses have been indoctrinated to believe that persecution is evidence that theirs is the true religion. 2 Timothy 3.12 says, all those desiring to live with godly devotion in association with Christ Jesus will also be persecuted. It didn't say maybe, good chance, probably. Will be persecuted. Guaranteed. That's the whole reason why persecution is such a big deal for this religion, to the extent where they invoke Bible prophecy, they point to the king of the north, king of the south prophecy in Daniel and say, oh, this is prophesying our persecution. This is prophesying the persecution of Jehovah's Witnesses. We need to be persecuted because it says so in the Bible that Christ's followers will be persecuted. So in this dramatization, we see in a nutshell why the organization features persecution both real and fictitious, so prominently in its propaganda. But it's just interesting for me, as this particular dramatization unfolds, you see little clues at how controlling this organization is. You'll notice where the guy says, We must continue to meet together, even in small groups if necessary. We must continue to meet together, even in small groups if necessary. This is just something you need to do even if it means you'll get arrested. Christian faith isn't something that you can cultivate personally. You've got to do it with other Jehovah's Witnesses. You've got to do it in precisely the way that the organization mandates, even if it means risking arrest. And what's interesting is that this particular dramatization is revisited later on in the concluding music video and I'm going to show you part of that music video that doesn't make the cut in my final edit because basically I don't want my audience sitting through the entire music video because it's quite triggering. So I plucked this particular part out from what I'm going to show later but I'm going to show it now because basically we're going to see this whole situation revisited.
So hopefully you noticed there that following the guy's arrest, his wife and daughter, <laughs> who again look suspiciously the same age, <laughs> they continue worshipping and you get them having this covert meeting where there are no brothers, where there are no male Jehovah's Witnesses, I should say. And because there are no males around, as you'll see in the video itself, which Tibor is hopefully overlaying at this precise point, one of them is wearing a head covering, presumably the mother, as she takes this covert meeting that's going ahead secretly so that the authorities aren't aware. So <laughs> inadvertently, in this video about persecution, in this video that's intended to remind Jehovah's Witnesses that they are special, they are unique, they're uniquely being persecuted, and this persecution is going to intensify during the Great Tribulation. Incidentally, they cannot help but weave in this detail, which should be a good clue, especially if you're watching this as a woman who isn't a Jehovah's Witness, who's perhaps just interested in what the religion is all about. Maybe you're wondering whether this is a religion that you could get involved in. Well, this is the view it takes of women. If you're a woman in this organization, you're not allowed to teach. You don't get a voice. And if through necessity, meetings must continue, even though there are no men around to do the teaching, you need to show your subjection to men as someone who has to do the teaching by wearing a head covering. So I love the fact that they've included this small detail, which is a strong hint at how sexist and misogynist this organization really is.